where to shoot boar and with what. Tim's on charging boar, running boar and high seat boar. We have more shoot curious etiquette with Mr King. You don't give the impression that you're a meanie. Plus the wildfowlers talk dirty barrels and there's the chance to win some UK shoot warehouse decoys. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Boar hunting comes in many flavours. There's the driven hunt, the high seat and the most testing of anyone's nerve, the charging boar. Hakila's latest promo film shows a very cheesed off pig coming at the hunter. This is when you'd better have your skill set well and truly honed, unless you want a permanent reminder of this hairy encounter. You always have to be aware and, and the day you're not aware, then it'll be coming. So. I've been standing with wounded dogs on my shoulders and in, in, in deep water and I couldn't shoot and I was just waiting for the, the wild boar to run me down. But two or three meters before he turned and gone to the right or left, whatever. Because as soon as you have shot the first shot, then you may be not aware where the dog is for the second shot. And the dog can change very fast in direction and, and, and you will put yourself in a situation where the dog will be uh, in trouble by a chance you can shoot him. So to ensure the best results, you need to practice a lot, and there's no better place to get in touch with your inner boar than here, Mamimiyakt in Sweden. Last time, Tim Pilbeam saw how they train boar hounds at this amazing facility. This time, he's the one getting the training from owner Lars. Tim is using a Zauer 303 semi-automatic rifle in 8x57, perfect for fast, powerful, moving game. So in this situation, that, that's the kill zone, that's stop the, kill the ball, zone, yeah. so what we're doing is, is probably aiming... Here will be too low to, to shoot it, Yes. Uh, here is a perfect spot to kill it, here is a perfect spot to kill it, here it will set on its ass, but it will still stop, okay. because you break the spine, yeah, yeah, yeah. as soon as you go down here, you won't stop it. So whereabouts do I put my red dot, where do I aim for? I will put it somewhere here, somewhere here, yeah, and then you get so it there. So aiming, aiming there yeah. To, yeah. to get yeah. in there. Yeah. So and, the, and the thing is that, to do that, you need, uh, if it's, let's say, it's very close, then you just keep on straight, straight on, straight, yeah, at, straight it. at it. Yeah, but as, let's say you've got 20 meters and it's coming towards you, then you need to do this. Mm. We can be happy it's not a live one. <laughs> <laughs> Lars also shoots. He uses a bolt action. You can see how much of the target this rifle leaves when viewed through the shot cap. Next, time to get Tim's eye in on the driven target. For this purpose, Lars has a simple Promatic Rabbit launcher. He assures us ricochets are not a problem. So Lars, everybody, there's lots and lots of different techniques out there how to shoot moving targets. Mm -hmm. As far as you're concerned, is what's the, the easiest way, what's the best way to do it? For the wild boy, I think one of the, the most important things is that you dare to leave the target. Dare to leave the target? Yeah. And right, what okay, I mean by that is, yeah, yeah, but I think it's very important because by, by leaving the target, I, I'm not talking about now you leave the target with one or two meters, that's mm. not what I'm saying. But if you shoot on a running target, and that means a wild boar on this occasion, uh, then you come from behind, let's say this is a target, I will always start from, be, yeah, yeah, like yeah. this, yeah. I will, I will come from behind, go through it, and maybe take the shot here, but I'll still keep on driving the, the rifle. In that point of view, as soon as you leave the target and you take the and you take the shot, 
you still need to take the swing. Okay. Yeah. So, 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 so the swing needs to follow through. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nice. Well, if you look well at done. the target, your, your shot is here. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. one of the shots were here, so you're quite close to it. The only thing you need, you need to, dub, you need to go down a little bit and then follow the line in the bottom, then you got it. A lot of people said, that's a maniac, shooting on clays, running with a <laughs> rifle. But it is, it is unique, I've never heard of it No, but else. I think yeah, it's yeah. fantastic anyway, because you, you just lower the speed a little bit, and then you'll still be there. And it's not so easy to hit them, but what you get is that you, as soon as you shoot at this target running, you will see your bullets are not far from it, the target. That means it gives you confidence mm. that you dare to shoot, you dare to pull the trigger when you're there. Yeah. And then I think another thing is, is very important with shooting is you need to have fun. Yeah. When you go to a practice, you need to have fun. Mm. If you don't have fun, you never practice. It takes Tim a few goes to get his eye in, but he does get into the swing of it. All that remains is the high seat, and this time it's for real. Does Tim fancy trying for a wild wild boar outside the estate's fenced teaching zones? He certainly does. There's a high seat in the forest next to a feed station that glows in the dark. We've got a feeder down there, which um, is fed automatically with they're using an app on a mobile phone, which is absolutely fascinating. They can set the time, the amount of food, and it tells them when it's empty. But even more interesting, is they've got a neon light around the top of this feeder. So as the light drops, the light actually comes on, which allows people to look at some boar, because that's what I'm talking now, there's some boar walking up towards the feeder. He's swinging around a wee bit, David. There we go. So we've got three wild boar. Look at this, isn't it fantastic? So we're right in the southern Sweden, uh, in the forest. And there we have it. We've got some three youngsters. They look probably nine to uh, 12 months old. Just coming up to feed her. Now the most important thing is they're quite young actually, they've still got their stripes. We've got a male, three males at the moment, which means we actually can shoot these. They are causing huge problems around Sweden and they need to be controlled, so this is what we need to do. And uh, they're in front of us, so one that needs to be taken out. For those who don't like too much blood, look away now. Here is the shot in slow mo. The reason we want to show you this is to reinforce just how powerful even a young boar can be. It is dead, but it runs 20 yards and drops. We've got an 8 by 57 here. It's our 303, 196 grain bullet. We put the bullet straight through the engine room of this, uh, off the ball, and that still didn't knock it down. Absolutely amazing. But uh, absolutely brilliant. There's definitely no need for neon tonight. Tim is astounded that an animal could run so far after being hit so hard. Nothing surprises Lars, who's seen it all. As soon as you get one long and it goes out a little bit behind maybe the shoulder on the other side, oh. they will always run a little bit. Even if they're deadly wounded and they, and they go on, sometimes there's a lot of blood and sometimes there's nothing. And it uh, depends on, they got so much fat inside and the, and the fat will run down, go down directly and, and put it in the, in the hole. So that's one of the main reasons, but I think uh, the most important thing is get so, so, so high up on a wild boar and as far in, as up the, the, the spine and in the neck. Uh, the further you go up in the front, the better, if you want them on the spot. It's been a full boar fun-filled day. The Swedes need to control their increasing boar numbers and here they make sure that if an opportunity arises, they have the skill to take it, no matter how close. Thank you, Tim. Now from running boar to walking dead, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Grouse, partridges and pheasants are getting cleverer. Scientists have found that the more stupid a bird is, 
the more likely it is to be shot. By looking at the skull size of stuffed birds, scientists found that those killed by hunters appeared to have a smaller brain than those that evaded the shotgun. Research by a French scientist and a Danish taxidermist reveals that shooting is killing off the stupid birds and the rest are evolving to be cleverer. The iconic Scottish painting, The Monarch of the Glen, is to be sold. Sir Edwin Landseer's painting of 1851 is expected to make more than £10 million at auction in December. It was an instant hit after he exhibited it and became a popular motif for advertising products. His other well-known rendition of a stag was Stag at Bay, which was widely copied as a print like this one. Prince William's wildlife charity is investing in attack dogs. Old Pajetta Conservancy in Kenya has anti-poaching dogs supplied by Daryl Pleasance of White Poor Professional Dog Training in Norfolk. The estate on Mount Kenya faces a constant battle to defend its rhino herd from poachers. The dogs are part paid for by the stars of the hit TV show Downton Abbey. Browning has given its hunting blog a wash and brush up. The New Look website carries feature articles about hunting and shooting and you can subscribe to it on Facebook and Twitter. Simply visit bit.ly forward slash Browning blog. A deer stalker from Oregon, USA was impaled by an antler of an elk he'd just shot when he crashed his ATV. 69-year-old Gary Heater was dragging the elk's carcass up a steep hillside when the vehicle flipped, sending him backward onto the elk's antler. He was flown by helicopter to a hospital where he's recovering. An angler from Siberia has caught a moose. Ivan Drakev saw the animal floundering in a hole in the ice. He rang his father and they threw a rope around it and dragged it out. It lay still for 30 minutes while it recovered and they took the opportunity to get some selfies. In another animal rescue, here's a very fortunate white-tail buck. Drew Kitchens from Georgia, USA, found it with its back leg hung on a fence. Drew reports there wasn't too much damage, certainly not enough to stop the deer kicking Drew after he freed it. And finally, a Dutch woman has come up with an ideal tool to keep your dogs fit, but only if they're very, very stupid. Watch it for a second or two and you get the picture. Stephanie Vane's video has, of course, gone viral. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now it's time to see what you lot have been up to. It is Hello Charlie. Charlie, it's Dick from Flightline Decoys. Just working on the FF5 here in my workshops in West Sussex. Got you playing away in the background. What more could you want? Hello Charlie. Nipped out my Seagull 243. Bag these two foxes. Gonna train over a couple more. Hello Charlie, Daryl from Norfolk doing some pigeon shooting. Uh, not much luck at the minute, but fingers crossed. Hello Charlie, Johnny LT from Denmark. Out this morning trying to shoot a fox with this call. And I got one. Big meal. Hello Charlie, Hamish here from North Wales. Just opened up the post today and uh, something special came through. It's my DSC2 paperwork. It's official. Youngest ever to do his DSC2. Hopefully he can come up and see us soon in North Wales and uh, keep up the good work. That's it. Please send me your Hello Charlies via Facebook, YouTube, Dropbox or email charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Thank you for those. Please keep them coming. Now many of you enjoyed Shoot Curious last week. Well, not only did you enjoy his wisdom, but some of you spotted Edward King's ability to levitate. Well, he's back and this week he's talking about food and drink. Shoot Curious, a very British game shoot explained. How to dress, what is a beater, what is a sporting bird? If you have been invited and have no clue, then this is for you. No. Nah. Food and drink at shoots. Do you bring your lunch? Do you not bring your lunch? It's a simple thing. You find out before you go what the catering arrangements are going to be. There are plenty of shoots where you bring your own sandwich and you have lunch sitting on a straw bale in a barn. There are plenty of shoots where you go to a pub and you all chip in 
at the end of lunch. There's other places where you have lunch in a grand house served by liveried servants. Uh, and you don't put your hand in your pocket. You don't have to remember to bring a big wedge of bread and some cheese before you leave in the morning. But do find out because it's uh, rather awkward to be standing around kicking your heels while other people are tucking into what they brought with them when you were expecting to be sat down and uh, eating at another person's table. Sometimes between drives you will be offered some kind of uh, libation. In the, the, the depth of winter you'll be offered probably a, uh, something hot and liquid like by way of bull shot or some uh, soup. Um, maybe a sausage roll or a glass of slow gin. Uh, my advice, such as it is, is by all means have whatever you feel like having, uh, but do be careful when it comes to the alcohol. Alcohol and guns generally do not mix, and uh, it only takes a little too much alcohol and a little too little concentration for something to happen which may, may make you regret it forever. And of course, if you do bring a hip flask, so that you can have a quick nip between drives, do please pass it round so that you don't give the impression that you're a meanie, because that comes across very badly. It's not bad form to have a quick bite on a mini Mars bar uh, during a drive. Um, it is bad form to be standing away with a Mars bar on your right hand rather than a gun when birds are coming over you and your host is expecting you to shoot them. So, right time, right place. What should not be in hand at any stage is a portable telephone. There is a shoot local to here where the rule is not just you have your phones on silent, but you have your phones switched off and left in your car during the day's shooting. There's a wonderful story where in the guns cart after lunch, someone pulled out a brand new phone and started having a conversation. The keeper, who happened to be traveling with the guns at the time, said, oh, is that the new such and such? Can I have a look? The bloke handed it over, and the keeper threw it into the ditch from the back of the moving wagon. And when questioned, he said, I did say, leave the phones in the car, and I wasn't joking. So the poor gun had to go back with one of the pickers up at the end of the day, calling his phone from the pickers up phone <laughs> to try and find his own in the ditch, which was very funny. No. Edward King, our shooting sage there. Now from Pheasant Drives to Muddy Shores and Nick has some top tips to get you out of a sticky wildfowling situation. With the sort of shooting that we do, calls and decoys go hand in hand and to tie them in, let's take the Canada Goose decoys as an example. These offerings from UK Shoot Warehouse, the Silo Sock, which a lot of people will be familiar with, for want of a better description, is almost like a hollow bag. It's got a kind of a two-dimensional head to it, um, which nevertheless works very effectively in the field, but we've now stepped up to this version, which is the same almost bag-like body, but made of a slightly heavier, more robust material, but married to uh, the, the forepart of the goose uh, and a three-dimensional head, which is flock covered, and otherwise sits on a similar sort of rotating peg as its predecessor, which gives it lots of movement when it's in the field. Movement, of course, can be the, uh, the key to the successful deployment of a decoy, decoy spread. Uh, and these, with their lightweight, easy deployment and realistic movement, should provide the difference between a successful day and an unsuccessful one. But one of the things that we would marry the decoys up with, a, uh, a goose flag. Now, it's extremely windy today, and I'm sure this is gonna make it more difficult to put this together, but let's give it a go. The beauty of this simple little device can provide that eye-catching bit of movement that means a bunch of geese that otherwise might have flown past you. You've got your decoys, you've got your call, 
you've got a goose flag which imparts just enough movement to catch the corner of their eye. You rack up your short read MPK Canada goose call and I'm pretty much certain that you can turn those birds in towards your decoys and bring them into shot. One of the problems that faces wildfowlers all around the coastline of the UK is what happens if you get uh, a blockage in one of your barrels. And as you can see, the right hand barrel on this gun is obstructed. And if you can imagine that you've, I don't know, perhaps stumbled or been a little bit careless in the half light, you look up to check your gun and you find that you can't see daylight down the end of the barrel. You know that you've got something stuck up there. So this is the, the, the Mark II uh, idea that I came up with. And it's, as you see, it's a couple of three sections of, uh, of dowel, the appropriate thickness, with a, a homemade leather washer on the end. And I've crudely joined it together with some cable ties. And the purpose of that really is simply that if, if I put the thing in my bag, it stays together in, in kind of one piece, if you like, uh, rather than having it in three separate sections. Feed the first bit in, the second, they will simply push from one to the other and there's enough left at the end to remove practically any obstruction. This one I've just demonstrated on a 30 inch barreled gun, but it was actually made for a 26. But you can see that the principle works. The bore is now clean and clear. And if I was out on the mud flats and I had experienced a blockage in the barrel, we're now ready to, uh, to rock and roll. And my incredibly simple 99p barrel clearer goes back in my game bag for use on another occasion. The ever practical Nick Horton there. And UK Shoot Warehouse is offering you the chance to win a set of Canada geese decoys. Usual rule, simply write the word UK Shoot Warehouse in the comments below. We'll also run the competition on Facebook and we'll draw it, well, let's say, sometime in December. How about that? Now from the south coast to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. A couple of good wilderness films this week. The Pace Brothers strike again in Episode 5 Beyond the Hunt, hunting wild boar Scotland. Daryl Pace is after wild boar on foot in the Highlands. In another film of more than 15 minutes, Michael McQuilton from MCQ Bushcraft is out in Lampland after Capricalian black grouse. They get a grouse and Michael cooks it outdoors. Leszek Kaminski of sporting website polynek.pl films calling in red stags during the rut in Poland in this film. He's out with a Danish guest and the stags are roaring everywhere. Here is a pair of sporting brothers. Best Fox Call pro star for Nigel Humphreys put this clip up of a fox shot on the run. Night Sight is currently using the video as a promo. Meanwhile, Nigel's brother Colin Humphreys is decoying wood pigeons with a flapper on laid barley somewhere in North Wales, he says. Staying on pigeons, adventurer Ali gets in touch about his new video a day's pigeon shooting with a friend. It's hot work and they end up with a bag of 50. Fancy some fox hunting? Irish horse holiday operator Cooper's Hill is hunting with the Galway Blazers in this new film. It's typically fabulous Irish sport. And finally, Danish shooting instructor Jesper Delgren from Delgren Shooting Grounds tells me about this film where he is introducing guns to new partridge shooting skills. Yep, you do have to speak a bit of Danish, so that counts me out. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that is it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please go to our website fieldsportschannel.tv TV where you can click to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube or pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain, it's at 7pm UK time every Wednesday and this has been Field Sports Britain, good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and goodbye.